we have covered about the basics of Kubernetes in one of our previous videos. In this one, we will try to create a basic Kubernetes deployment. The topics that we will be covering today are a simple installation of Kubernetes locally, building an application using Docker and Docker file, deploying the application using Kubernetes deployment resource. Then we will see how the replica sets play their role in controlling the number of replicas of the pod. Then scaling of the application to multiple pods and then how we can access the application using service resource. So let's get started. To install the Kubernetes locally, you first need to install the Docker desktop. You can do that from the official website. I have installed it. So if I open the Docker desktop, it will give me a dashboard page like this. To enable Kubernetes, I can go to the settings. Then there is a Kubernetes option. I will enable the Kubernetes. It will ask me for apply and restart. It will take a few seconds to restart the Kubernetes. And don't worry, if you guys mess up the cluster, you just need to reset it from here. And in case you don't want to use the Kubernetes, you can just disable it from here and then apply and restart. This is the most easiest way to install Kubernetes. If you want to know how to install Kubernetes manually in AWS or GCP using different VMs as nodes and do the complete manual operation, do let me know. I will prepare a video for that as well. Now let's check out the basic application that we have created and we are going to deploy this in the Kubernetes cluster. So first of all, I will take you to the code of the application. This is an express node.js server and it will listen to the port which is mentioned as 3000. To create this application, we have a Docker file which will be using the Alpine image and we have the source directory and other required things mentioned. By npm install, it will install the required packages and copy rest of the application, expose the required port and listen to the port and it will start the server. In our package.json, we simply have the dependencies for express.js. Don't worry, I will share this code in the git repo for your reference. I have also attached a readme file. This will help you in running the commands directly. So I'll copy the command from here. So for this one, I need to go inside the node app directory and I can build the application. It will pull the Docker image from Docker Hub of the tag node 20 Alpine, which we have mentioned, and it will follow the steps. Once the build is done, we have the image locally. This means that the node which is being used by the Kubernetes already has the image. If it doesn't have the image, then it will try to pull the image from Docker Hub. But since we have customized the application, we are going to use a local image. Now I can check whether my image is created or not. Since I have lots of images, I will just try to use a grab to pick the particular image which we have just built 34 seconds ago. Now we can test our application using docker run command. I will also mention the dash dash rm flag so that once the application is exited, the container will be deleted. So it is listing to port 3000. Let's check out the port. Yeah, it says hello developers. This means our Docker file is working fine. Our Docker image and the container is working fine. Now we are going to deploy this application in Kubernetes. I will stop it. Now let's go through the deployment resource, which I have already created. So this is the structure of a basic Kubernetes deployment resource. Here we are going to specify the API version, the kind deployment metadata, the name or any other thing that you want to define label or anything. Then we will define the specs replicas. This will allow us to create a single replica. If you want to scale it down, you can set it to zero as well. Then match labels. These selectors or labels are used to map the deployment with the replica set and the replica set to the pods and then the template with the labels as node app. Then the spec the spec contains the list of containers we are going to deploy in a single pod. So the first and the only container we have is the node app with the image node dash app colon 1.0. So this is the image we have just now built. And for the ports, the container port is mentioned as 3000. Now let's deploy our deployment resource. I will create a new namespace and then we will switch the context to that one. Now I am going to apply the resource. To apply, we have this command present kubectl apply dash f deployment dot yaml. In the end, I will mention the namespace as well as basic deploy. So it is showing that the deployment is created. Now 
if I try to get all the deployments present in this namespace, it is showing me uh, it is ready and up to date. Now let's check the pods present here. So this pod is created. Now if I need to access the service running inside the pod, I can use port forward. Now why I am using port forward is because I cannot reach the pod directly from my local host, but I can reach the port using port forward. To do the port forwarding, this is the command we can use. Now let's check out the browser localhost colon 4000. Yeah, I am able to reach to the port 4000 and it can show me the page and it will also show that it has got a connection. Now suppose we want to scale the deployment. How can we do that? To scale the deployment, we just need to mention the replicas as two. Then I can apply the same file in the same namespace. To check the pods now, I can see I have two pods. One just started three seconds ago. But to utilize the application, I was using port forward and I can forward the port to a single pod at a time. Currently, if you have to utilize your replicas, if you have to transfer the load, you need to have an external resource which will do that for you. And that resource is services. Kubernetes services allows you to transfer the load to different pods. For external users, the resource will be provided from a single connection, not from multiple pods. Let's check out the services config file. Here we have a Kubernetes resource of service and the name is uh, node app service. You can change it according to your needs and then selector is node app. This selector actually defines how your service will be able to connect to the pod or the deployment for connections. And here it will target to the port 3000 and the node port is 3080. The node port defines the port in which my local host will be accessing the service and then service will transfer the route from this node port to the target port of the pod and then pod will handle how to transfer the service to the container. This issue of node port happens because I was already using the port. I will try to clear the port later on. I have changed the node port to 30085 and now we can try to connect. Now we will apply the service resource. The service resource is created. Now let's check out the service. So if I refresh now to the port 4000, it will not be able to connect to the server. But if I reach out to port 30085, it is able to connect. And now the connection might go to either of the pods. This node port service is good enough for your local deployment. But if you try to use it in production, I would highly recommend to use an ingress service. That ingress will help you in routing the load to a particular service and then, then it can forward to a pod. Now let's talk about the replica sets present in the cluster. So when we created the deployment, it also creates the replica set resource. This is the actual resource which is responsible for the number of replicas of pods which should be there. We have set the replicas to two. Uh, the job of this resource to have the ready state of two. If any of the pod fails, then it will try to delete the pod and it will try to create a new one on its own so that your desired state is always maintained. Thank you for watching the video. In our next one, we will try to cover up the config map and the secrets. If you find this video helpful, please press the like button. Thank you.